So you're considering making a move to Tampa, Florida? Well, don't, unless you can handle these six things. I'm excited to share this list with you today. After living in Tampa Bay for the last four years, we've just started celebrating our fifth year here in the area. We've learned a thing or two about what we like and also what we don't like. And I really wanted to share this list with you today. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Tampa Bay area. So if you're into this kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. And if you're considering making the move, we can help you with that too. The thing I wanted to get into with this list here is what are the things that can wear on you after you move to the Tampa Bay area or might deter you from moving in general? And you know, you'll see these lists all over the internet. If you haven't, we've done pros and cons videos. I will link those up in the description here, um, up in the card here in the description down below. So you can check those out. I would strongly encourage you to do that. But we've learned a thing or two, you know, you move down and you've got, you know, you might be bright eyed and bushy tailed and you know, you're so excited to move to the beaches and the sunshine and you just can't wait to do that. And then you come down and reality hits you just like it does in every other place in this country or in the world for that matter. Every place has its pros and cons. And while that, this isn't a pros and cons video today, um, I do want to talk about the things that are not necessarily our favorite and may not be yours either. And I want to start this list off with the obvious elephant in the room and it's weather. And you you know, with all that beautiful sunshine, it comes with a little bit of a, you know, bumpy road from time to time. We're in a subtropical climate here in the Tampa Bay area. And we are known for having, you know, some pretty strong tropical storms. We also have the potential for hurricanes. We have been extremely blessed in the Tampa Bay area. And at the time of this recording, we have not had a major hurricane hit us directly in almost 104 years, which is incredible. <laughs> I've done an entire video on this too, because I know it was one of my uh, biggest concerns when we moved our family from Detroit down to Tampa. We, we were ignorant. We didn't know. We didn't know what we didn't know. And of course you're thinking about hurricanes. And you know, last year seeing Ian come through, um, the year before we moved, Irma came through the state. I mean, it, Florida has had its run-ins with hurricanes and you know it is something that you definitely want to consider. Now I've done an entire video breaking down on how to prepare your home. Um, I shared my journey last year when we, we went through Ian even though it didn't hit uh, Tampa Bay directly it went south to Fort Myers Beach. Um, you know we still had to prepare because they were telling us the entire time it was coming for us. So this is something that you definitely want to keep your eye on you know but when it comes to weather overall you know hurricanes you know it's hit or miss right and we get plenty of notice. So that that's important, but you know, it gets really, really hot here in the summer. And I've shared this story before, but I think it's such, it's such a good way to really kind of get a sense of what the Gulf Coast summers are really like. Because, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't like extreme heat, I don't know that you're really, Florida's for you. You know, you're definitely gonna wanna take that into consideration because during the summer season, you know, and we call it the rainy season, but basically July, August, and September, it's hot and it rains and it rains every day. And um, that's almost hyperbole, but it's pretty close. And so much so you can basically set your watch to it. You know, it'll rain midday almost every day during that time period. And if you've ever been anywhere where it's 90 degrees and the sun is always shining and then it, you know, you get a humongous storm, what happens is the humidity just keeps building up every single day. And I always, I kind of laugh when I heard this, but I remember when we first moved down here, um, we were over in uh, Fort Lauderdale for a training um, with other real estate agents. And I had a gentleman say, hey Juan, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? He goes, well, it's kind of like waking up with a Labrador retriever breathing right here in your face. When he told me that, I could get the visualization, but until you experience it, you don't necessarily know. Now, here's what I'll say. Uh, it, I would trade 
sweating and having to shower twice a day if that's what you need to do uh, for snow and being stuck in the cold and gray and dreary every single day of the week. So for me, this is not a toss up, but it is something that you need to take into consideration if you're considering making the move because we do have those hot weather days. Now, we also have the awesome weather, you know? Um, you know, at the time of this recording, it's February. It's gonna be mid 70s, to, uh, high 70s today. The sun is shining. It's gonna be an incredible week. This is definitely something to take into consideration, but in my mind, it's worth the trade. The second one on our list here is the bugs in wildlife. And, you know, you may be moving from a place or considering moving from a place where you have, you know, snakes and and alligators and you know spiders and all kinds of crazy wildlife outside but I moved from the north we did not have <laughs> um, for the most part you know many if any venomous animals uh, we had uh, brown recluse spiders but like it was very rare for somebody to get uh, you know, uh, bit by them. And now here we have poisonous snakes and people letting snakes out in the wild that aren't native to Florida. I mean, it's crazy what happens down here. But the other thing that I wasn't ready for is just the everyday things you'll see. And um, some of them don't bother me or the, us at all. <laughs> Others, we had, we definitely had an adjustment period. And I think it's worth taking note because when we talk about wildlife, you know, I'm not just talking about the bugs in particular, right? We do, we've got um, palmetto bugs, which I've, I've told this story about how with the first week we were here, we had a palmetto bug in our house and it it flew and you know it was it was ridiculous and you can see that on my pros and cons video talk all about that um, but this is a roach that's like this big and they call it a palmetto bug it's it's marketing at its finest because it's a roach it's a roach y'all it is nuts and this was an adjustment for me we have things called no seams which everybody's worried about the mosquitoes when they come to florida no, no 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 that's what you should not be worried about you need to be worried about the no seams and yes it is just like it sounds like you can't see them and they're these tiny little bugs in when you get in a shaded, uh, humid area, man, they will light you up. So it's definitely something you gotta take note of. We've got fire ants. Now, in, in four years, and again, going on our fifth year here, I've never stepped on a fire ant, thank goodness, but my son has, um, uh, the girls have not, and the dog has never got into them as far as I'm aware of, so that's good. There are snakes. The lizards are, are something you have to get used to because they're everywhere. Now, they eat spiders, so it's kind of a good thing, and mosquitoes and those types of things. We've got geckos, too. So, like, it's just these adjustments that you have to make when you're not used to seeing these types of creatures. When it comes to alligators, you know, people ask all the time. It's one of the, the top questions I get. Hey, what about alligators? And here's what I'll say. Um, I have uh, seen alligators twice now on uh, property tours with clients um, and I've, I've told the story on, on several videos but the last time I went there was a, a water retention uh, pond where all of the community water goes to and the houses back up to it's beautiful there were two alligators in that pond that day <laughs> and the client's like can we put up a fence and I was like yes you can put up a fence so like they're there and here's here's the way that I look at it and and this when I say this I'm saying it tongue-in-cheek but for me and my family we have just made the decision that if there is an open fresh body of water that we just assume that there are alligators in it now I don't think that that's anywhere near the reality of it. But I believe that my life will be a lot simpler if I just keep my family and myself away from that, right? The Gulf, we get to go and have it. Beautiful, you know, we've got dolphins out there. Yeah, I know there's critters that I don't want to know about, but you know, that is so rare. Um, you've got a way better chance of winning a lottery than ever being struck by a shark or something like that um, out in the Gulf of Mexico. But I'll tell you right now, I my belief is that it's 100% an opportunity for me to get my behind shoot on if I climb in a fresh body of water. So I just leave it alone. <laughs> I got no interest in it. And hey, this is totally up to you how you want to approach it. But for me and my family, we ain't going near that fresh body of water. All right, the third thing on this list is the cost of living. Now, at the time of this recording, uh, Tampa is still nationally recognized as uh, being uh, less expensive than the national average in terms of cost of living, which is awesome. Uh, according to salary.com, we sit 5.6% below the national average, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna pull up some stats here in a minute so you guys can look at this versus maybe other areas you're considering moving to, or maybe the area where you currently live. I think it's something to take into account. But you know, we have seen a steep rise in housing prices over the last three years. Insurance prices have uh, risen. I, 
you know, we had a, an insurance agent on, you can check that out in the lives. I'll try to link that down below so you can check that out where she really broke it down, like what it what it costs to, to insure a home and why we've had challenges. And obviously we have hurricanes, so that's a, you know, a major component of it. But just overall, it's been a struggle with, with uh, homeowners insurance, but it's not insurmountable. Otherwise, everybody and their brother would be leaving and they're not, they're coming. So while we do face those challenges, these are things to take just take into account. So when we talk about cost of living, I think it's very important to start with housing because, you know, depending on where you're moving from, Tampa Bay still looks like a ridiculous value to some of you and to others, you know, maybe you lived in the Tampa Bay area and, you know, you've been here for the last 10 years and you've watched your real estate go up almost 60% and your salary hasn't. And now all of a sudden it looks unaffordable. But again, looking back to that national average, we sit a full um, 5.6% 5, 5 under the national average, which I think is important. And people have been finding out, I've been saying this for a long time, Tampa is still a value. If you look at, from a, a coastal perspective, housing here is cheap. Just on the national average alone right now, the median single family home in the United States costs $388,000 on average as of today. That's the median, okay? In Tampa Bay, that number is $390,000. So just a skosh above that, right? $2,000. So relatively speaking, it's almost the same. Now that's on housing. So how do we uh, make up for that difference where our healthcare cost is lower, our grocery cost is lower, our insurance, you don't have a personal income tax here. These are things that, that kind of affect that, but it's worth noting because it has been climbing and for the foreseeable future with, with people continuing to relocate here from other areas where their money goes a lot further in Tampa Bay, it is going to continue to put upward pressure on, on uh, the overall cost of living. So that is something to keep into account for sure. But what I, what I would love to do is get into these numbers here and share them with you. So what I wanted to do is jump inside of uh, salary.com and show you what's going on with the cost of living. All right, right now it says that Tampa is 5.6% lower than the national average, which is cool. And that takes into things like transportation, food, housing, um, and then the consumer price index, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it notes, you know, the, the most expensive areas in the country, which is San Francisco at 86.1% above the national average, Washington, DC, 56% above Miami, 11.6% above. And I'm not going to read this whole list here, but you can kind of see as it goes along. And then it talks about the cost of living here in Tampa. So our energy costs are about 5% lower than the national average. Our food is about 11%. Um, healthcare is almost 20% below the national average. Uh, housing is about 1.3%, but I just gave you the actual number. So take taking that into account, that's an approximation. And this article is probably about a month old. So factor factor that in as well. And then transportation is about 7.3% less um, than the national average. Now our cost of living compared to some of these other cities. And I wanted to make note of this because, you know, we're getting a lot of phone calls from cities on this list. And this is the reason why, because their money goes so much farther. And I want wanted to share that with you here. San Francisco versus uh, versus Tampa, 91.7%. That's the difference. Cost of living is 91.7% is, is higher in San Francisco than Tampa. Washington, D.C., it's 61% higher. Miami, it's 17% higher than Tampa. This is why we're taking phone calls from people uh, in Miami considering moving to Tampa. It's 20% less than Chicago, Illinois, 56% uh, less than Boston and Massachusetts, 86% less than um, New York, and then 3% less than Dallas. And, you know, again, we get a lot of phone calls about making a move to the area and, and taking in consideration what the cost of living is. I've done a, an entire video around the cost of living here in Tampa. Uh, we'll link that in the description down below. That way you can, um, you know, check that out also. And if you're getting any value out of today's video, please hit that subscribe button and click that little like button while you're down there as well. Or if you know somebody who's considering making a move, feel free to share this. You could be their hero, they'd love it. The fourth thing on our list is traffic. And traffic in the Tampa Bay area can be pretty slow. You know, there are about 3 million uh, residents here at the time of this recording and the area has exploded and our infrastructure is pretty old. Now, I wanna keep this in perspective because if you live in a place like Chicago or New York or Los Angeles, Tampa traffic is not comparable. Like I already know that, everybody knows that. But you know, for the area, it 
can get pretty congested, especially during you know traditional rush hour times. And it can get really slow, especially um, the 275 uh, I-4 interchange when you're heading out of Tampa towards Orlando. And um, anybody who's ever been on I-4 driving to Orlando, whatever the time is that it tells you it's gonna take to get to, from Tampa to Orlando, always add an extra 30 to 45 minutes because there's always accidents and there's always way more congestion than they say. Um, but that's not Tampa, right? Like going to Orlando, but it, it is something to consider because it does get extremely congested downtown on the interchanges. You know, when you're coming over the Tampa Bay Bridge, um, um, and that's the Howard Franklin for those of you uh, who don't know. And we'll put that on a map actually. There's three bridges as you cross from Tampa over to the Gulf Beaches. Um, on the north, you've got the Courtney Campbell um, in the middle of it, which we've got this huge project going on right now where they're making more lanes because it was so congested. That's the Howard Franklin. And to the south, where you go from Tampa to St. Petersburg, um, that is the uh, the Gandhi Bridge. And these bridges are awesome, um, you know, it, just for relative perspective to get from basically any of the Gulf beaches, Clearwater, St. Pete, Indian Rocks, um, to downtown Tampa or the airport in particular, you're looking at about a 45 minute drive. Um, our lights take a really long time. And you know, at certain times of the day, that same drive could take you as much as an hour to an hour and 10 minutes because of traffic. So something to take in consideration. Our lights take a really long time. I often make a joke that you can knit a blanket at them. And I feel like that's true. The amount, I can't imagine the amount of emails and text messages that get answered at a Tampa stoplight because they just take forever. Um, it's there, it takes a long time and you know, Know, driving in the Tampa Bay area, you know, uh, you got to keep your head on a swivel. We have a lot of young drivers and we have a lot of retirees here as well. Um, while Tampa itself is really young, 36 years of age, which most people don't recognize that. Tampa is a very young city. And even the Gulf beaches, you know, the, the median age here is 46 years of age, almost the same age as me. Um, the further south you get, the more uh, the the older the populations get. But you still have quite a few retirees here, and and you know when you have young people driving and people who are you know maybe at the tail end of their driving career, it can get a little bit interesting. But I think the bigger factor here is that you have so many people from all over the world um, that come here and bring dr different driving habits, um, and <laughs> and it can get interesting. So you definitely got to be mindful of it. You know I shared this with you guys before but the first three years we were here, our vehicles were hit each year, which was nuts. And two, two times we weren't in the car, the third one we were on the highway. So, I mean, it is like, ugh. Last year, nope, we didn't have any issues. Thank the Lord, um, because it was getting out of control. But traffic can definitely be a, a hindrance here in Tampa. The fifth thing on the list is public transportation. Um, I don't think it's abundant here. Uh, we definitely have opportunities. It, I will say this: you know, I lived in the Detroit suburbs before, and finding any public transportation was just so difficult because Detroit was so large and uh, the greater Tampa Bay area is not small either but you do have you know uh, public transportation in the form of buses we've got the Sun Runner which just kicked off in st. Pete which takes you from downtown st. Pete to the beaches which is awesome there is uh, the uh, the buses that run all the way down the Gulf beaches so you can go from Clearwater to st. Pete like there's public transportation for that which is great but it's not abundant especially you know when you talk about Pinellas County which is just west of Tampa over where the Gulf beaches are. When you get back into Tampa, you do have the streetcar, which is pretty cool. Um, you do have the buses there as well. We've got uh, scooters, there's the birds and those types of things too. We do have uh, bikes that you can rent, but I don't think there's an abundance of public transportation options. I mean, I, I think it's pretty, from what the other cities that I visited over the years, it is pretty comparable. So I, I'm not sure where you're at, but we don't have an elevated train system like Chicago or um, a subway system like New York. So, you know, those things aren't here yet. They are working on the Bright Line, which is a uh, high speed rail, which is going to go all the way from Miami to uh, to Tampa Bay. Um, this is going through Orlando coming into Tampa. This thing is supposed to move you from, um, you know, central Florida to the, to the southern end of Florida very quickly. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I can't wait to try it out when it gets here, but we're still a little ways away. So, you know, when it comes to public transportation, what I would say is just do your homework. Um, I'll put some of the links down below for public transportation it, because if it's important to you, I would love you to have perspective based upon where you currently are um, compared to Tampa because I think that would give you a much better perspective. And the sixth thing on the list is people. 
And here's the thing I wanna say about this before anybody gets up you know, in a tizzy about what I'm about to say. Look, wherever you go, there you are. I had a really smart person tell me one time, if my attitude stunk, wherever I went, my attitude tended to follow me around. And you know, if you go looking for trouble, you're gonna find trouble. If you go looking for um, negativity, you're gonna find negativity. You can find that anywhere. I guarantee you I can go to paradise and I can find it there, right? But if you're coming to Tampa because you're looking to you know, enjoy the incredible lifestyle that it offers, you know, the flip-flop lifestyle, the laid-back lifestyle, the sunshine lifestyle, you know, if this is what you're coming for, you're going to find it and you're gonna find it in abundance. But I will say this, Florida is known as the, the live and let live state, right? And with that, you got to be willing, you know, to 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 walk in, in an environment where not everybody is going to agree with you, but they tend to leave you alone about it, um, which I absolutely love. And that's part of the reason why we love living here, because you can operate the way that you think is best for you and your family, which is great. It's not completely free. Listen, I live in the United States of America. I understand my limitations, right? But we do have what I believe is a bit more freedom to operate. We tend to be very business friendly as, as, a, um, as a state and we are very friendly to, to ownership, right? And people's rights. So we try to keep those things in perspective, but it's not perfect here, y'all. So, you know, I'm not in here, you know, painting everything with sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows is the reason why I'm sharing this report with you or um, uh, my, my six reasons because I do think that not everything works for everybody, right? While I love the state and I've fallen in love and my family has fallen in love with Tampa Bay and we have no plans to move because every one of uh, the benefits that we receive, um, the good outweighs any of these cons. We have no plans of leaving the Tampa Bay area. It has been an absolute blessing to me and my family. The relationships we've built, the quality of living has gone through the roof. Obviously, I don't have to pay uh, personal income tax anymore to the state. I think that that is awesome. You know, there are all kinds of other benefits. You know, I tell everybody all the time when they ask the question, you know, Juan, what's the biggest difference between Detroit um, and Tampa? And there's a lot of them. But to me, the biggest one is you do not have to shovel sunshine. And to me and my family, that mattered. So it's infected our mood. It's infected everything about how our family lives. We get outdoors so much, and I think you would too. And hey, if you have any questions about moving to the area or relocating or potentially investing in the area, do not hesitate to reach out. Like I said, I'm a licensed real estate professional. I'd be more than happy to have that conversation. All of my contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar um, where you can schedule a time to jump on a Zoom call and we can talk about the area. I love walking people through the city, through Google Maps and through my eyes and trying to match the correct community with your ideal lifestyle. Um, it's one of the my most favorite things that I get to do because of this YouTube channel and I'd be more than happy to do it with you as well. But however you got to get hold of us, whether that's through phone call, text message, email, heck, I even get DMs on Instagram. Do not hesitate to do that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a new video just like this. And I'm also going to leave two videos here that I think you'll absolutely love and will absolutely help benefit you in making the decision on whether Tampa Bay is the right area for you. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.